All right, now let's have a look at what do you mean by persisting data with volumes in Docker. First of all, what do we mean by persisting data? Well, what happens is every time you create a container uh, in Docker and then you create some data in it, now that data or even that container itself is in an ephemeral state. What that means is it is something that is in temporary that is temporary in nature. So the moment you delete the container, the data is gone. Now, how? what if you want to actually persist that data? Now, if your container needs data for it to be useful, you have to recreate it every time if you don't save it somewhere, you know. So now, if you believe it or not, this is actually by design. By design, containers are supposed to be stateless. They should not maintain any state. This allows for easy repeatability and this keeps them uh, easy to manage, easy to upgrade, easy to change. However, there is a way in Docker called volumes, which allows you to mount data to a particular container and that data has to be stored somewhere from where you are mounting a volume. Uh, one example of that is that volume could be on your host machine. The host machine is the machine which, which is being used to run the containers. Now, uh, let me show you an example of this. So let's say for example, So let's say I have an Nginx machine inside which, oh, sorry. So I'm going into an Nginx machine right now and inside over there, I'll create a file, say, uh, this is my nginx config file, and I'll put it to nginx config dot conf. All right, so now I have nginx config.com. If I see the contents, I can see this is my nginx config file. Now, um, as we said, the moment I delete this container, so if I actually exit, uh, currently this container is no longer running because I did an exit on it. So, but this container is still present, right? So I can again run this container. Oh, sorry. I can again start this container as I did. I can attach it. Uh, I can see the container ID. Okay, so I can attach it. All right, now I can again see this data. So essentially, currently we are still in the same container. The container is not yet deleted. But what if I come out and I delete this particular container especially passing it on so now if i do docker ps hyphen a this container no longer exists what this means is my file nginx config.conf is gone too it just doesn't exist anymore right so this volume uh, i can what this means is i can essentially have a directory say i could have a directory called docker share so now I have this directory called docker share. So I could actually use this as a volume to mount inside the container, which we'll have a look at shortly. And then every time I make any changes to this particular directory or any contents in this particular directory, they will be stored on this host machine where I'm running Docker, which is my Fedora Docker tutorial, the host name machine. If you look at the host name, it's Fedora Docker tutorial. Right, so I don't have to worry about my data being deleted even if somehow my container is stopped or deleted automatically, right? So what this allows you to do is, it allows you to seamlessly upgrade or change your containers. So say for example, uh, your containers were running on a previous version of Nginx and now you need to, uh, you have a newer image of Nginx, official image on Docker Hub. 
which is of a newer version of nginx and you just want to go ahead and use that version and create all new containers with that version so you don't have to worry about your config files because your config files are being stored as a volume not as a data inside the containers this allows you to seamlessly upgrade or change your container in this case create new nginx version containers and then just ask them to pick up the config automatically from the volume that we create in the first place right this also allows you to store any data not just nginx configs it can be database for mysql it can be configs for your redis machine it can be any data it can even be your environment variables for example that you need to run a particular python app say right so this allows you to store any data in an industry mechanism standard mechanism right so uh, what is an industry standard mechanism well people prefer storing data in something that is scalable that is cheap to store on cloud platforms um, that is easy to maintain that is easy to share and one example of that is aws's s3 storage or google cloud platforms persistent disk storage or even digital oceans block storage volumes uh, i'm sure microsoft also has its own solutions um, so this also allows you to do that now in the next video we'll have a look at how do you actually go ahead and mount these volumes and then we'll try to make some changes to the files in these volumes and see if they are being stored on the host machine or not thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay posted with the newer videos and please let me know in comments on how i can make things better for you guys or what are the things which you would like me to change or cover in this channel see you again